Last season, we aired an investigation about why bees are dying in huge numbers. It was a story that looked into a class of pesticides called neonicotinoids. These chemicals are used on millions of acres of farmland, and some beekeepers say they've played a key role in weakening or killing their bees. Almost 60% died last winter alone. Since our story was broadcast, the Ontario government has decided to act, calling for a partial ban on the pesticide, a ban that could spread across North America. As Jackson Proskow reports, that's led to a showdown, pitting Ontario beekeepers against some very powerful forces. In the fall of 2013, Jim Coney Bear's bees in Ontario's Corn Belt were dying. Here we have a hive that is unhealthy. We don't have enough bees to cover the full amount of comb. It's got a death sentence on it for the winter. It's not going to make the winter. Two years ago, we followed Jim when he loaded his bees and drove them up north, away from intensive agriculture and the class of pesticides called neonicotinoids he says were killing his bees. We've come back almost two years later to see how his bees are doing now. The hives he left down south were still in serious trouble. Uh, just a dead hive. There's feed in this, but they're dead, so. Jim says that neonic pesticides have had a major impact on his bees and on bees generally. In Ontario, beekeepers lost almost 60% of their hives last winter. We can't carry on treating 99% of the corn with uh, pesticide. It goes into the environment. Whatever pollinator feeds on the pollen, they're going to get a mouthful of neonics, unquestionably. <laughs> Jim is upset that vast expanses of soy and corn, almost four million acres in Ontario alone, are planted with neonic treated seeds. Farmers use treated seeds as an insurance policy to protect from infestation, whether there are pests in the ground or not. You see an attitude that doesn't matter what we do here, doesn't matter about the bees. We're gonna do what we can to treat everything we can and make a buck on our product. Jim wants the pesticides massively restricted. Now the Ontario government is taking on the pesticide companies and it's set to become the biggest fight in rural Ontario in living memory. This is the biggest threat to the structure and ecological integrity of the ecosystem that I have encountered in my life. The plan, a partial ban to restrict the use of neonics by 80% in Ontario. There is a much greater issue at, uh, at stake here, Mr. Speaker, and that is the health of pollinators across the province. Other governments in Canada and the U.S. are watching the outcome very closely. If this law passes in Ontario and the pesticide gets restricted, it could have a domino effect with other governments banning it as well leaving the pesticide companies to lose billions. It hits their pocketbook. When you have millions of acres of treated seed going into the ground, you have a lot of your product going out there and being purchased. It's not just the pesticide industry facing losses. It might also hit the pocketbooks of grain farmers. They've relied on neonics to keep pests from destroying their crops, they say the federal government approved the pesticide and said it was safe. We're focused on the priority of actually reducing bee losses, Mr. Speaker, because we don't think that's good for the environment or for beekeepers or for, or for crop producers. Glenn Murray is Ontario's Minister of the Environment, and he's leading the battle to get most neonics banned. I think we're now understanding the, some of the unintended consequences of widespread use of such a toxic substance. A few years after first approving neonics, the federal government launched a review to see if the pesticides were safe. But that review didn't happen fast enough for Jim. Yeah, what do we got here? These don't look the best, I don't know. See, there's a bunch of dead bees over here. 
Jim estimates he's lost almost a million dollars, in part from the damage neonics have done to his bees. You're always looking, wanting to see a healthy hive. Lately, it's very, like the past couple of years, it's very difficult to get healthy hives. For Jim, a partial ban will help save his bees, but grain farmers who rely on the pesticide say they stand to lose. At the end of the day, this is my means to provide income for my family. Third generation farmer Henry Van Ankum is unpacking treated seeds and preparing his equipment for the spring harvest. He says that neonics are crucial to protect his yields from the risk of pest loss. It's a tool that, that has been proven to work. It's worked very well. This isn't a situation where we blame farmers at all. They're out there planting, they're doing their job. And they had no idea. Initially, we had no idea that this was a problem. But with over a decade of research and massive bee losses, a lot of people agree it's a problem now. The body of research out there is kind of extraordinary. Governments like France, which just moved to ban them entirely, Minnesota now has a bill before its house. While the research against neonics is piling up, and while beekeepers, scientists, and governments around the world are pushing for bans, there's still at least one group insisting the pesticides are safe. We're quite confident that that science will support the continued use of these products. Pierre Patel is a vice president of Crop Life Canada, the pesticide industry's lobby group. According to him, science says neonics are safe, and the federal government agrees with him. There are hundreds of studies that show that field conditions where bees are being exposed to these products in, for example, nectar or pollen, that those levels are at such low levels that they're not having impacts on colonies. If the regulators didn't have enough information to determine whether that these, these products could be used safely, they would not allow their continued use. When you've had not one year, but you've had eight years in Ontario of extraordinarily high levels of bee death, uh, you have to act at one point. You have to, you can't wait another 10 years until everything is beyond any doubt at all. Jim certainly wasn't going to wait around years to watch his bees die. Right now, I'm experiencing 75% loss. And right now, I am experiencing my livestock dying. We followed him on the night two years ago when he loaded up some of his hives and moved them north, away from intensive agriculture. He's waited all winter to see if his bees survive the cold weather. We'll take a look at this one here. Yeah, that great. sounds good. That sounds really good. Yeah, look at this one. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> amazing. They are amazing. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. It's very, very healthy. Jim wants all his bees to be as healthy as his northern bees. It's a beautiful hive. These hives are just awesome. His bees will soon start foraging for pollen and nectar after a long winter. He wants that food to be free of neonics so his bees don't get sick. I think we've got 36 hives in here and not a dead hive. Yeah, I mean, 100%, you can't, you can't do better than that. I guess we did something right. I guess we did something right, yeah, I agree. <laughs> there are some scientists researching methods to predict where pests will strike so farmers can reduce the use of neonics. But that work is not complete. We realize not, not every acre uh, is gonna need seed treatment, but, but I think we have to acknowledge the difficulty in, in being able to make that decision uh, because there's, there's huge uh, risk involved. Who takes that risk? The farmers, um, some farmers would have significant loss. You may get farmers where there will be very little impact, but you may get other farmers where their losses will be quite significant. Pesticide lobbyist Pierre Patel says that neonics will help farmers deal with significant losses. How big those losses might be depends on who you ask. For Patel, European crop yields have been a disaster since the EU banned neonics last year, and farmers are paying the price. 
We have a massive experiment underway in Europe. We need only look over there to see what this moratorium is doing. And what it's doing is that there's many areas where there's massive crop loss. Glenn Murray also looked at worldwide studies, but he saw something very different. Overall, crops planted without neonics suffered minimally. There's a large body of research out there that suggests that there is not a huge yield benefit when you're seeing losses of, of a couple of percentage points. Uh, or when you look at the study in the United States, which saw uh, neonicotinoids had really no benefit to soy. There was no major yield benefit. We sat down and went through the numbers ourselves. Some farmers did suffer losses, but we found overall yields actually went up in Europe for major crops like corn and sunflower after the ban was passed. We won't know what will happen to crop yields in Ontario until after the partial ban comes into effect. Quebec entomologist Jean-Vievre Labrie is one of the scientists researching ways to reduce use of neonics. She says using these chemicals the way we are now could pose a danger to more than just crops and bees. There is a 100% of uh, river that were, uh, that were monitored that showed uh, some neonics inside. Neonics leave the soil and get into rivers and lakes. When Quebec's Ministry of the Environment tested 20 rivers, every one showed traces of the pesticide. Some rivers had levels two to five times higher than what the Europeans consider safe. And scientists worry these chemicals could be affecting animals higher up the food chain. There could be aquatic invertebrates that could be affected. Earthworm are affected. Uh, birds could be affected. My bees are not the only thing affected. This is a situation where pesticide is broadcast throughout the environment. It's out there. It's not playing favorites. Scientists sounded the alarm about bees and neonics. Now some of those same scientists are sounding warnings about the wider impact of these pesticides. For Jim, the problem is immediate and emotional. Seeing my bees die, I don't know if it's anger. I mean, there's maybe some anger there. It's, it's more of a heart thing, you know. It just, it upsets me. These hives are just awesome. It's a beautiful hive. I need this. I need this. If I didn't have this, I would be leaving the business, unquestionably. All right, Emily, I'll give you a hand here. And that is our broadcast for tonight. A reminder, you can always connect with us on Facebook and Twitter or at global16by9.com. I'm Carolyn Jarvis. From all of us here at 16 by 9, thanks for watching.